Hello guys, welcome back. So let's start with a new topic that is lungs. So lungs are a part of respiratory system, right? Now the whole respiratory system, starting from your nose till the end, comprises of an epithelium which is known as which is known as respiratory epithelium. So write down respiratory system. It's lined by which epithelium? Respiratory epithelium. Now what is this respiratory epithelium? Write down. It is pseudo stratified is also known as pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium you have to remember this epithelium okay it's important because it's asked many a times okay so now let's start with the respiratory system first before moving on with the lungs in detail so starting with the respiratory system we start with the nose right nose now you must know that this nose has cilia you have hairs in your nose right it is called as cilia okay so it is ciliated or you can write or has hairs for what function the ciliated or this hairs they trap the foreign they trap the foreign substance okay if dust is going inside that will be trapped in your nose itself if so that they don't enter your lungs okay foreign substance okay now from the nose the air will go to the pharynx okay now pharynx is divided into three okay so first it will pass through the nasopharynx so write down naso division of the pharynx nasopharynx towards your nose side oropharynx that is your towards the mouth the back side of the mouth okay this laryngopharynx will continue into larynx okay what it will continue into larynx now this larynx then becomes your trachea what it becomes trachea now there are few points about the trachea that you must know so i'm writing it over here okay so write down how much long trachea is trachea is 10 to 12 centimeter long so write down trachea is 10 to 12 centimeter long okay or you can write it as 4 inches instead of centimeter okay it has 16 to 20 c shape cartilaginous ring c shape cartilaginous rings okay and this rings are present on the anterior and lateral side posteriorly you have to write down posteriorly it is covered by smooth muscles so posteriorly it has which muscles it has smooth muscles okay so suppose this is the trachea okay and here are the rings this is the ring so posteriorly it will have this smooth muscle posteriorly it will have this smooth muscle okay now this trachea further write down divides at write down divides at t4 now the point where it divides it is called as carina what it is known as carina so trachea will divide into bronchus what it will divide into bronchus a right primary bronchus and a left primary bronchus okay now the right primary bronchus it is straight write down an important point regarding it it is straight and long than left so there's a question coming with the right primary bronchus that if someone inhales something where will these will that structure which he inhaled will go into and get trapped it is right primary bronchus we'll know that in a few minutes when we look at this simplified diagram which i've drawn okay for now just remember that it is straight and long than left and something entering into the lung might will get trapped in this right primary bronchus okay it won't go to the left one write down this right primary bronchus will open into right lung and left primary bronchus will open into left lung now let's write the division the differences between the two okay so right lung write down it is heavier that is it is 625 grams and left lung is 575 grams okay so it is a bit lighter than the right lung now this right lung has three three lobes made by two fissures okay and left lung has two lobes made by one fissure so the first let's write down the three lobes first is the upper lobe then comes the middle lobe and then comes the lower lobe okay or you can write inferior lobe the two lobes of the left lung are like this upper and lower okay now for the right lung let's write down the what comprises in the upper lobe okay so upper lobe has an anterior segment now every lobe is divided into segments okay so upper lobe has anterior segment a posterior segment and an apical segment 
ओके मिडिल हैज अ मिडिल सेगमेंट और मीडियल सेगमेंट और लेटरल मीडियल एंड लेटरल राइट डोंट राइट मिडिल राइट मीडियल एंड लेटरल so middle has a medial segment and a lateral segment middle has been asked a lot of time in the question so please remember the middle segment but now as clock is advancing they might ask you a different lobe this time okay lower lobe you have to remember write every all this five names and add basal at the end what you will add basal so write down anterior basal segment posterior basal segment apical basal segment medial basal segment lateral basal segment okay so how many you had you have 3 2 5 3 segments in upper lobe 2 segments in middle lobe and 5 segments in lower lobe now let's look at the left lobes left lungs lobe so upper consist of anterior lobe posterior lobe sorry anterior segment posterior segment a apical segment a superior segment and an inferior segment so how many are there five okay total lower lobe of the left lung also contains five you just have to write basal what you will write here basal anterior basal posterior basal apical basal superior basal and inferior basal okay so how many again five segments in the lower lobe now how to remember what is present in the upper lobe of the right lung and what is present in the upper lobe of the left lung upper lobe you can remember by the mnemonic appa in korean they call that as appa okay so write down appa and whenever they have to give respect to someone in korean language they add the word si okay so you can write appa si coming the mnemonic for the upper lobe of the left lung so so that's how you can remember appa is present in the upper lobe and appa si will be for the upper lobe of the left lung okay middle lobe of the right lung is very important so please remember that and also remember how many segments are present in how many lobes okay that is also very important now there's something important about this right lung this right lung inferior border is present at t6 so it an inferior border present at t6 vertebrae okay you have to remember and one more thing that if you look at the lung from the posterior side then from the posterior side lung ends at the 10th rib so write down a note lung from posterior side ends at 10th rib okay so this is also important write this also okay now we have done these segments right now these segments which are looking at this anterior posterior apical medial lateral and basal segments these all are called as bronco pulmonary segments what what are they they are bronco pulmonary segment now each bronco pulmonary segment has their own write down has their own pulmonary artery and their own tertiary bronchi now what happens this this right primary bronchus will then divide into bronchioles this bronchioles will be divided into primary bronchioles secondary bronchioles tertiary bronchioles respiratory terminal bronchioles and respiratory bronchioles okay so this each bronco pulmonary segment has their own pulmonary artery and tertiary bronchi tertiary bronchi okay but pulmonary veins is same so pulmonary veins are same for all the bronco pulmonary segment this bronco pulmonary segment write down an important point one one more important point that it is functional unit of lung what it is it is functional unit of lung okay so write down lung has one apex what it has it has one apex which is present above the first rib present above the first rib it has one apex it has one base the base sits on the diaphragm the base will sit on the die from it has two surfaces it has sorry it has three surfaces the first is costal surface second is mediastinal surface and the third is diaphragmatic surface now mediastinal surface it is also called as medial surface okay towards the medial side so write down mediastinal medial part and is towards the medial side 
faces middle media stream now what is media stream first write down faces middle media stream okay media stream is a space between the lungs okay it comprises of many organs vessels important vessels except the lungs so lung doesn't come in any media stream okay but other organs like heart it is a part of media stream we'll be doing it later so for lung you just have to remember the media stream also faces it faces the middle media stream and on the medial side of the lung lung hilum is present what is present lung hilum is present now hilum is a place where any structure or things are entering and exiting out of a structure okay so for this you can see in this diagram that this is the medial surface right in the medial surface you can see this trachea is dividing into bronchus which is entering the lung so the place where it is entering that is the hilum from here only all the other structures which have to enter the lung or have to exit the lung will be present okay so this is basically hilum is a hilum is a place for the gateway for the structures to enter and to exit okay so lung hilum is present on which side the medial side so for hilum write down structures enter and exit the lung okay costal surface is basically the anterior surface right costa means crib i have told you many a times diaphragmatic is basically the base surface where the lung will be sitting on the diaphragm okay they ask an important question write down lung root position of structures so position of structures in which way from top to bottom or posterior to anterior so this is the direction in which they ask lung root is basically they are talking about the lung hilum only okay so here you have to remember the mnemonic bow okay first on the very posterior side you have bronchus present then you have pulmonary artery and v stands for pulmonary vein it stands for pulmonary vein you can see this through this picture okay so this white color which you are seeing this is pulmonary sorry this is bronchus what it is it is bronchus this blue color what you are seeing this is pulmonary artery now you might be wondering why the artery is in blue color whereas this red is vein now what do you mean by artery and vein first of all artery is a vessel which carry which carries blood from the heart to the organs right so and vein is a sub vein is a vessel which carries blood from the organs to the heart so pulmonary artery it is coming from the heart okay and is carrying deoxygenated blood instead of carrying the oxygenated blood because in the lung it will come okay here there will be gaseous exchange will take place where the carbon dioxide will be taken up by the lungs and oxygen will be poured into the artery then from there this red color which is seeing this pulmonary vein this will carry the blood back to the heart so carrying the oxygenated blood okay so you can write the extra point over here pulmonary artery carry deoxygenated blood usually artery is carry oxygenated blood right but here is carrying deoxygenated blood and the fact that it was given the term artery was just because it will carry the blood from the heart to the organ okay and pulmonary vein will carry oxygenated blood okay it will carry the oxygenated blood to the heart now it was given the term vein because it is carrying blood from the other organs to the heart okay so remember this difference why it is called so so here you can see bronchus is at the very posterior side then you have pulmonary artery then you have pulmonary vein so remember this mnemonic bow they ask you the positions of the structure coming from top to bottom or posterior to anterior you have to remember it okay now lung you must remember few more points about it that lung is covered like men like brain was having meninges right you remember brain was covered by meninges similarly lung is covered by pleura lung is covered by pleura okay the covering of the lung is pleura now what does this pleura do it cushions and protects the lung when it expands when we inhale and come back to the original shape of it so it cushions and protects the lung so there are this pleura is two what it is is two in number we have parietal pleura and visceral pleura parietal pleura it is attached to the chest wall outer chest wall and this visceral pleura it covers or attaches firmly to the lung so it will attach to the lung 
Now between this parietal pleura and visceral pleura, you have, so write down, between them there is pleural cavity. What is present? Pleural cavity. Now this pleural cavity is filled with pleural fluid. And this fluid is nothing but some amount of WBCs and many other blood compositions, okay? But it is a transparent pleural fluid. It is filled with pleural fluid. Now what happens? Sometimes there is air filled in this pleural cavity. So then we term this pleural cavity as pneumothorax. Sometimes blood gets filled, we call it as hemothorax. So write down problems of pleural cavity. So first write down pneumothorax. Pneumo means air. So air in thorax means air in pleural cavity. Okay. So write down air. Second is hemothorax. Heme means blood. So blood in thoracic cavity. Heme means blood. Third write down pyothorax. Pyo means pus. What does it mean? It means pus. And the fourth one lastly write down chylothorax. Now chylo is lymph. What it is? Lymph. So you just have to remember the names and one more thing that if there is pneumothorax, a patient is coming with a pneumothorax, we perform the pleural puncture. Pleural puncture is we inject a needle and we drain the air or the substance which is present in the pleural cavity. So pneumothorax, the pleural puncture for the pneumothorax, it is done at second intercostal space where it is done at, write down, second intercostal space at mid clavicular line at which line we have done the lines in the very first video of the anatomy, okay. So these are, this is the importance of lines. So that's why in the very first video, I told you that you must remember these lines. For hemothorax, the pleural puncture will be done at fifth intercostal space. At posterior axillary line. At which line? At posterior axillary line. Okay. For this two only you have to remember because these two are only asked in the questions. Now let's look at the diagram which I have drawn. Okay, first let's learn about the pleura. So orange color which I have drawn over here, this is the parietal pleura. What it is? Parietal pleura. Okay. This gray which you're seeing in between, this is the pleural cavity filled with pleural fluid. Pleural cavity. This blue which you're seeing, this blue color which I have drawn which is tightly you can see it is attached to the white line. The reason why I have done is that because it is the visceral pleura which is tightly attached to the lungs. So this white color is your lung. Okay. So you must know how the lung is covered. Now let's look at the lung. You have to draw this these diagrams which I have drawn. Okay. So here I have started the diagram with the trachea. You can see this trachea. You can see the cartilaginous C-shaped rings. Okay. It is hyaline cartilage, but on the posterior side, it will be by smooth muscles. Now, why is trachea having such a structure is to prevent its collapse. Okay. So that trachea won't collapse and breathing will never be stopped. Now, this trachea at T4, at which place T4 at carina, carina will divide into right primary bronchus and left primary bronchus. Right primary, I have drawn, tried to draw on a straight bronchus, right? So if anything comes, will enter this right primary bronchus. Okay. Instead of going to the left. Okay. Then this bronchus, you can see it is dividing into bronchioles and this bronchioles further is dividing into bronchi which will then further end into alveolar sacs. You have done this in physiology or you will be doing this in physiology so don't worry. The alveolar sacs. Now in the beginning I said to you that the whole respiratory system is lined by the respiratory epithelium which is also known as pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. You must remember that when it comes to the alveolar sacs, in the alveolar sacs it is squamous epithelium, simple squamous epithelium. Okay. Because that diffusion has to take place. So the epithelium should be very simple one. And the very simplest epithelium in our body is the simple squamous epithelium. Okay. And this which you see in the whole thing which you are saying, this is called as bronchial tree. You can see it looks like a stem is there and it is giving off many roots. Like right? So it was given the term as bronchial tree. For the left lung, you are seeing this in inward bulge. Right. This inward bulge is the cardiac notch. It is present only in your left lung because behind this what is present? Your heart is present. So what happens? Your heart is situated like this. Okay. Your heart is situated like this. And the apex of the heart makes the lung bulge inward. And this bulge is called as inward bulge is called as cardiac notch. You must remember that also. Now this I have divided the lung into segments already. Okay. So this is the right lung. This is the left lung. So right lung has upper lobe, 
मिडल लोब एंड लोअर लोब अपर लोब हैज विथ सेगमेंट्स हाउ मेनी सेगमेंट्स थ्री सेगमेंट्स मिडल लोब हैज टू सेगमेंट्स लोअर लोब हैज फाइव सेगमेंट्स सो फाइव प्लस फाइव हाउ मेनी राइट लंग हैज टोटल टेन सेगमेंट्स सिमिलरली लेफ्ट लोब हैज फाइव सेगमेंट्स इन दी अपर लोब एंड फाइव सेगमेंट्स इन दी लोअर लोब सो हाउ मेनी सेगमेंट्स डस लेफ्ट लोब हैज टेन सो ईच ऑफ दी लंग हैज टेन सेगमेंट्स For the right lung, you can see it is divided by two lines. These two lines are called as fissures. The first one is the horizontal fissure. You can see that it is horizontal in shape, right? So it is called as horizontal fissure. And there is one more point regarding this horizontal fissure that you must remember that it runs from sternum to fourth rib horizontally. It runs from sternum to fourth rib horizontally. Okay. And you have this one fissure which is called as oblique fissure. What is oblique fissure? Okay. In the left lung, you ha only have one fissure, which is known as oblique fissure. You cannot, you don't have this horizontal fissure. So everything about the lung is done. I hope pleura is clear, the lobes are clear, the segments are clear. Thank you.